Hello, Blaine Gray here, Plastering for Beginners, and today I'm going to show you how to panel this wall. It's obviously becoming quite a fashionable thing now to have the wood panelling on the back walls. This is the back wall of our bedroom, so it's going to be the main feature wall as you walk in. And I'm just going to walk you through the process and how we're going to do it. First, I'm just going to go into a few little things. So, we're keeping the skirting boards on and the coving. So, we're governed by that really. The thing that makes the panelling is strips. So it's basically, typically MDF strips that you cut up and you run them up and across your walls. And it's little strips that make the basis of how the panelling is done. I've cheated a little bit. So what you can do, I've bought these strips, the pre-cut, they're at nine millimeter thickness, which is just about the thickness of the coving, slightly less than the skirting boards. So it won't look too out of place. You don't want it too thick. So what you can do is you can buy these strips, nine millimeter thick, cut at hundred millimeters width, and they come at 2.4 meters. The other thing, I've also got them pre-primed. That means when it comes to the later stages, um, it's just gonna be a lot less work. The thing is, if you get MDF, raw it's going to take a lot of coats of paint it's going to take some primers and generally take a little while so i've spent out i've spent they've cost me a bit more actually it's pretty much um double in price to get it primed pre-primed but it's going to save me so much time at the decoration stage so i got this from mdf direct let me double check i got these strips from mdf direct like i said you just say what thickness you want and what width what length and um, what the depth is. So otherwise you'd get big strips, uh, big sheets of MDF. You'd have to rip them all down at 100 millimeters. Um, I've got over 20 sheets here, 20 rips. So I just thought, save time, get these pre-cut. And if you're a DIY enthusiast, then it's gonna save you a lot of time just doing this. But let's go into it then. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna have two main bars running in the center of the wall and then we're going to have the uprights to run in between. So the first thing we want to do is get the tops and the bottoms on. So I want to get the tops, the bottoms and the sides and then that's your frame. Everything else after that is filled in. So let's talk about adhesive, how we're going to fix it and where the starting point is. Okay, so I'm going to be starting on skirting board level. I'm just going to quickly offer a level up to see how we're looking. Ideally, we'd have all these level and plumb. It's not too bad. I mean, it could have, it could be raised up a little bit to the right, but generally I'm quite happy with that. So what I'm going to do is just run it directly on top of the skirting board there, fix it in, and then get a few nails in. So let's look at the adhesive we use. So I'm using Everbuild Stick Sol. I just got this from Tool Station. Um, generally, you want an adhesive that is quick grip firm straight way or you want an instant stick almost so when you're offering the uh, sheets up they're not going to slip they're not going to move because what you've got to be careful is you've got to make sure they perfectly plumb every time you do it and it really makes a difference if you use a decent adhesive so i've used stick so uh, a lot of people recommend grip fill i find grip fill is a bit too thick for this it's very typical like, it's just very thick so when you're pushing it into the wall you'll always have a bit of a gap. If I have, if I was to use grip fill, I'd probably use this grip fill. This is a grip fill, a solvent free one. It's a lot thinner. I must admit it's not as fast acting, so it doesn't grip as fast as a typical grip fill was. So even though this was more expensive, I just thought this is gonna be the one I'm gonna use because it's an instant grab. It's very good stuff and it's quite thin. So when you stick it in, it's gonna, it's gonna firm up. So, there's not much to it really, you just, you literally just spread the adhesive all over. So you want a, a decent amount, because to be fair, it's gonna be the adhesive that does all the work. I'm gonna whack a few nails in, but that's only really to stop it from moving. And until it's the grip fill, it's this adhesive that's gonna do all the work. So you just run it in, Push it in then, so push it in tight. Again, really, you would have ripped the skirting boards off, come down, you would have actually had them extra length, so you would have cut them deeper than what the skirting boards would have been, put the skirting boards on top. But like I said, we didn't really want to go too far into it. So, just stick that on there.
Now what you want to do is with your nails, this is a hole punch, you want to follow up with the nails and you basically hammer the nails in deeper to the wood. That's so the nail pin never shows when you're doing the painting. So um, these are designed especially just to dig the nails deeper into the timber and then after it you can fill it, which we'll go into in this tutorial. Um, so yeah, you literally just follow up with this, pin them in after. Okay, so we've got our bottoms in, we've got our base rails in, so we've got the head and we've got the bottom. Now we've got to put in the legs either side, so we've got to put the two ends on. This is where we've got to start getting, well I've already cut the two pieces in there, but basically what I recommend you use is a chop saw. This means that when you use a chop saw you're going to get a 90 degree cut and generally it's a lot more efficient in times and a lot more accurate when you're using a chop saw. So instead of using a hand saw or a standard circular saw, chop saw like I said is guaranteed that 90 degree angle. So I'm going to set up some um, benches but I will say the most important thing with this in any terms of carpentry is just making sure that you're millimetre perfect. So you want to be measuring your distances in millimetres, not centimetres, because millimetres you get that, that extra gauge and how tight it's going to be and it's a lot more accurate reading. So the biggest thing with this from now on is just making sure that your cuts are accurate, clean and tight. Because what you don't want is a lot of, you don't want a gap because it allow for movement and then basically it might crack in between the joints. So you want all these cuts to be really, really tight. Um, so then it avoids movement, it avoids shrinkage, and it avoids cracking. The last thing you want is to do all this, you fill it, you paint it, and then it starts to open up towards the end. So really tight, accurate cuts is key here. This is a chop saw for anyone who didn't know. So as you see, you can tell it raises down, you've got your 90 degree cut there. So that's what I'm going to be using to cut it. I've got my measurement. Like I said accuracy is the point here, and that's the main focus. And when you've got your cut, offer it up. Make sure you're tight, both sides, tight at the bottom there. And we are tight at the top. So as you can see, this bit of discrepancy in the wall. Now the big question is, do you plumb this up and fill in the gaps or do you push it tight? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the level, I'm gonna plumb it up and do it that way and then fill in the edges because that looks like there's a serious bow in that wall. So I'll get it straight, hit it in, and then we'll have to just fill that edge there. But that's you can see um, that the previous walls obviously weren't straight. So that'll be a filling job after, I'm afraid. So I'll hit, nail that in, carry on. Okay, so we've got our frame sorted, we've got the bottoms, we've got a starting point on the left. Now we're going to do is sail through, putting the uprights in, in between the two sections. So I'm going to run the uprights first, and then I'm going to run my horizontal strips at the end. Now the point is, with that, is I've got two 44 meter lengths, so the lengths will fit whole on the uprights. Um, Basically, this wall is 4.3 meters. Obviously, I've not got anything long enough to do that. So, two the uprights first, and then fill in afterwards. So, the hard part with this is figuring out the measurements and distances in between. So, I'm going to show you a full guide on how to do that once they're all in. It's going to make more sense once I've got all the paneling done. I've got my uprights, I've got my horizontals, and then it'll be easier to explain once they're in. So, the process from now on is pretty simple. All we're doing is measuring the distance from this to the next strip and then onwards, 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 onwards. So I'm going to carry on doing the cuts, fixing, I'm just going to speed through it.
Now as you can see, there's a gap. Now this is called scribing. You take your pencil, you get it to the gap's width, like that. And then using your pencil, you follow the wall. And then what that does, is it gives you markings on where to cut. This is called scribing. Use your pencil or a gauge to follow around the shape and then you can cut it. Okay, so that's all the uprights. They're in place and they're ready to go. I had one, one problem actually. I uh, originally followed the detail around so you can see where I scribed around, got the shape in. So I followed it around and followed around that bulkhead and it was such a clash because the bulkhead stepped further than this leg here. So a lot of it is a lot of it is um, just testing and trying it for yourself. I prefer the detail now where the uprights stop on that curve. Same with the window. I prefer them stopping around the window. You can, some people actually put like an architrave around the window, but it'd be way too close. We have the architrave and then we've got the panelling. So I've literally just stopped it at the head, stopped it at the bottom. So that's what I'm choosing to go off. That's what I'm choosing to go by. Like I said, I did originally follow that, that curve round, but it just didn't look right in my opinion. So that's staying. Next up is the horizontals, and now I'm going to show you a little trick. You've already seen the laser level. At this point, it's, I think, pretty, pretty essential to have one of these set up. So you don't have to keep running your lines through. You've got your lasers set at the, the, uh, the, the height you want it. So I'm going to set the height now to where we need it, and I'm going to start running the sideways in. But it's the same principle. All we're doing now is just cutting in between the uprights. But it's the same principle. All we're doing now is going to set the height on this laser level, and then cut and stick right through. Okay, so here's my height. There's the laser level set up. I'm using what I tend to do. That is a plasterboard prop. Fix it to the ceiling. Don't worry, we're all gonna paint the whole room again. Fix it on, and then it's always in the place. So that is our height there, running all the way through. And theoretically, the measurements should be the same. So keep your cuts tight. Um, keep everything plumb, I mean level, so we've got a level line running across, work to that and because these are plumb, this is level, they should fit nicely in the slots. So again, it's nothing new here, I'm just going to cut and throw them in. So very lucky that the horizontals met with the upright almost perfectly in line there. So I had that stroke of luck and then not so lucky. I had to, I've just checked and put the new laser to the new line and I've had to scribe right around the windowsill. So yeah, you, you know, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> but anyway, it's cutting, it's not too bad. Cutting the scribed in around. But yeah. It comes back, doesn't it? You get one bit of luck and then another bit comes to attack you. So it's it's all good. <laughs> So, I was literally just putting the last piece in, I've noticed something. Can you see what went wrong here? <laughs> I went on the wrong side of the line. So, um, obviously I had the laser level. I was there. And in between, I was rushing to see my little girl because she was crying in the other room. And I forgot to mark which side of the line it was on. So, I've gone on the lower section. So, luckily, the adhesive ant dried. I've popped them off and just raised them all. So, it wasn't a big do hard, but... There's it, there is it finished. That's the panelling completed. Um, so yeah, even spaces. But now, it's probably the, the longest part of the job. It's not too bad putting the panelling in, but it's all the decorating. Luckily, like I said, I've got the pre-primed MDF. Um, 
And I've checked with my painter, mate. He says we can just use standard emulsion on that, which is lucky because got the emulsion for the uh, obviously for the walls, but we've got um, an accent green colour. It's quite it's quite bold. Um, but we've got to fill in all the pinholes, fill in any sections where there's a bit of discrepancy in the MDF. Um, obviously, deal with where the adhesive is now. Wait for that to go tacky. So I've got quite a bit of filling, and then after it, quite a lot of painting. So that's that done. Let's talk about how we get the dimensions and the sizes we need for the panel. What I'll do is I'll post a link in the video. I've got um, a pretty cool website of where this woman explains it pretty well. She explains the full process on how to do the panelling as well, and she explains, she um, gives a detail on the formula. So I will post that below this video. But that is how you plan and measure for your panelling. Next thing now is, I'm gonna do some prep. I've gotta do some, um, annoyingly, the edges weren't primed. So I'm gonna water down some emulsion. I'm just gonna, paint all the edges, get a whitewash on them, and then I'm gonna cork along the inside of all this, and then I'm gonna mix some two-part filler, which is wood filler, and then fill in all the holes and all the gaps. So, to be honest, a lot of this is now gonna be prepped, ready for painting. By the way, just so you can get a gauge on the usage from the adhesive, I didn't even fully use one tube for all of the panelling. I've literally, I don't know, I'd say I've got about a fifth left. So it didn't even use one tube. So that is the the um, the output you get from this stick all stuff. Because um, you don't need it that thick. It's not like grip fill where it needs to be bulging out. You just need a thin sliver all the way on. So like I said, in terms of adhesive, not much used at all, which is always good. Okay, we've got Evo stick decorator's cork. What we want is we want the nozzle to be thin. We don't want a big hole. We just want, as it, as it is almost, but what you do is you cut a slight angle in it, just a little chamfer, and then that'll be the leading edge, what you use. And then it'll just disperse a nice, even amount of cork along the edges. Let me show you, there's not much, there's hardly much there. It's tight, but there is some spots where there's a bit gappy, so there for example. But we're just going to cork the edges anyway, so if there is any movement, at least it allows for it and it's got it's got something that should hopefully stop it from cracking. So we're going to cork the edges and then like I said, use some wood filler to fill all the holes and hammer, hammer holes. And then leave it to dry overnight and then I'm going to start painting it next day. So again, just corking the edges, not a lot of cork used at all. Only a little stream. So you just go all the way around. Get come off there. And just with your finger, take most of it out. Try and follow it all the way around. It's the corners that are tricky. That's that. And I like to use, I usually like to use a J cloth or a little dish cloth, but we've got these little sponges. I've got to take the corner, get it in, in there, sponge it out. That just means you can get your tight corners in rather than just trying to get your fingers in there. You make the sponge do the work. And you just, and the water helps to lubricate it up a bit, it makes it easier. So you can see the biggest labour in this is going to be the filling, the painting, and the prepping. It does take a lot of prep to get this right and um, you know it's something that can't be skipped because I think 
it's all the prep and it's all the paintwork that makes it look flawless. If you get this stage wrong, I think it's just so easy to make it look cheap and cheaply done. So we've got to make sure all these look seamless and it looks like one piece of timber. Um, so that's what we're doing here. So take your time, try and get all your corners right and get your angles right and then it should look bang. Okay, the final bit. I've got some wood filler, it's two part filler. So you've got the, the filler and the activator. And what they say is it's a pea size activator to one golf ball filler. So yeah, you've got to be pretty careful with the activator. If you have too much, it will set it off. So all we're doing now, we're just filling in any holes that was left with the pins, any areas that aren't meeting up properly, so if we've got a bit of timber that's um, prouder than the other side, we want to make sure that is also covered. As you can see, I've already kind of started adding filler to the place. We're just going to go around and fill all the holes in now, and that's when it should start looking like one piece of timber when all this is filled. So. I will say though, if you are going to use activator with a two part, be fast because it does go off pretty rapid. But it's always good if you want to sand it down and get the uh, finishing stage done early. So yeah, just go around, fill in your holes and then that's nearly the prep done. So that's it, that's the feature wall completed. We painted the skirting board the same colour as the wall in the end just because of the way it sits. But that is, a, to me, a really nice finish. I love the way the curve finishes with that as well. It's gone really well. We've obviously put the blind in. Most of the room is done. We've just got to change the carpet. But yeah, that is the feature wall completed. That is how you do wall panelling in your home. If you like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe to our channel. Again, we're mainly plastering based, but we will cover a lot of DIY, DIY features. Um, and we'll, you know, we'll show you how we've got the rest of this room done. Thanks so much for watching. It's Blaine Gray here, Plastic Beginners. If you like this video, please hit the like button, please subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Cheers.